full text of Zhang Ailing's The Story of the Golden Lock P to Section 7 to Section 12 Golden Lock 7 The Upper Corner of the Glass Window vaguely reflected the shrunken shadow of a patrolman in the alley, walking past with swaying arms. A rickshaw silently rolled over the patrolman. The child tucked his robe into his waist and kicked the ball all the way to the edge of the glass. The green postman rode a bicycle copying the policeman's body and passed by. They're all ghosts, ghosts from many years ago, ghosts that have not been reincarnated many years later. What is real? What is fake? After autumn and winter, Kikiao lost contact with reality. Although the same tempers were used, beating the girl and changing the cook, there was always a feeling of despair. Her brother and sister-in-law came to Shanghai to visit her twice, and they didn't stay for more than 10 days. In the end, they always nagged her to the point where she couldn't stand it. However, she didn't give them less things before leaving. Her nephew Cao Chengxi came to the city to ask for trouble and left him at her home. Although Chengxi was a confused young man, he still did his duty. Kikiao's son Changbai and daughter Chang on are 13 or 14 years old. But because of their small stature, they look only 7 or 8 years old. Under the new year, one was wearing a royal blue facsimile satin cotton robe, and the other was wearing a green brocade cotton robe. The clothes were too thick, and they stretched out their arms. They usually had to thin white faces, standing side by side, papery, like a human being. After lunch that day, before Kikiao got up, Cao Chengxi accompanied his brother and sister to play dice. Changin lost all his New Year's money and refused to stop. Changbai snatched away the copper plate on the table and said with a smile, I won't come with you. Chang An said, We use sugared lotus seeds to bet. Chung Si said, Put the sugared lotus seeds in your pocket. It looks dirty on your clothes. Chang An said, It's good to use melon seeds. There is a kin on the top of the cabinet. He moved a coffee table, stepped on the chair and climbed up to get it. Chung Si was so panicked that she shouted, Sister Anne, please don't fall. I won't have anything to do with it if you look back. Just as he was saying this, Chang In suddenly leaned back. If Chung Si hadn't supported him, he would have fallen down. Chang Bai clapped his hands and laughed beside him. Chung Si mumbled and cursed, and couldn't hold back his laughter. The three of them laughed together. Chun Shi carried her down and suddenly saw Kikiao in the dressing mirror of the mahogany cupboard standing at the door with her head hunched and arms akimbo. She was startled and quickly put Chang in down and turned around and said, Auntie is up. Chi Kiao. Kiao Xiang Xiang ran over and pushed Chang in behind him. Chang in lost his footing and fell down. Kikiao just blocked her with his body and said sternly to Chang Si, I treated you, you wolf hearted thing. I treated you, said a wolf hearted thing with three meals a day and six meals a day. How did I mistreat you? You bully my daughter. You are such a wolf-hearted thing. You think I can't figure it out. Don't think that because you have taught my daughter bad things. I have to hold my nose and bedroth her to you so that you can take over our family property. I look at you, you bastard, and you still can't figure it out. I'm sure your parents taught me this idea. Those two ungrateful and ungrateful old bastards. After all they wanted my money together, one plan failed. And then another, Chun Shi glared in anger. Wanting to argue, Kikiao said, You still have the nerve to contradict me. Get out of here before I can beat you out with a stick. As he said that, he pushed his children out and was panting. He helped a girl and left. After all, Chun Shi was young and hot-tempered. So he packed up his clothes in anger and immediately left the Zhang family's door. Kikiya returned to the sitting room and lay down on the couch. The room was dark, with the velvet curtains drawn. Occasionally, wind leaked in through the cracks in the window, and the curtain moved, and Fang could see a little fluffy sky under the small dark green pom-pom. Otherwise, there was only the dim light of the lamp and the red-hot stove. Chang'an was shocked and sat blankly on a small stool by the stove. Kikiao said come here. Chang'an only said that he wanted to fight but Yin stayed next to him. He turned over the small red plaid fabric shirt hanging on the iron screen next to the stove and said, It's almost burnt. The shirt gave off a warm fuzzy smell. Kikiao didn't look like he was going to beat her. He just scolded her and said, You are 13 years old this year after the Chinese New Year, so you should be more understanding. 
Although my cousin is not an outsider, all men in the world are the same, damn it. You have to be careful yourself. Who doesn't care about your money? A gust of wind passed by, and the white cold sky was exposed between the pom-poms on the curtains, and a row of small holes were punched in the warm darkness in the room. The flame of the lamp flickered, and the shadow on Kikiao's face seemed to deepen. She suddenly sat up and whispered, Men, can't touch you. Who doesn't want your money? Your mother's money is not easy to get, nor is it easy to keep. It's your turn. I can't just watch your master be fooled. I told you to be more careful in the future. Did you hear me? Chang An lowered his head and said, I heard him. One of Kikiao's feet was a little numb, so she leaned forward to squeeze her foot. Just for a moment, a gentle memory flashed in her eyes. She remembered a man who wanted her money. Her feet were bound, and her pointed satin shoes were stuffed with cotton to look like half-sized civilized feet. She looked at those feet. Her heart moved, and she sneered. Even if you say yes, how do I know if you understand or are confused in your heart? You are so big, and you have big feet. Where can you go? Even if I can control you, I don't have the energy to watch you all day long. Ordinarily, you are 13 this year, so it is too late to bind your feet. It's my fault that I missed you. I will wrap them up for you right now. It's not too late. Chang on was momentary. Kikiya was speechless, but the old ladies next to her laughed and said, Little feet are not in fashion now. I'm afraid it will be troublesome when I get my sister engaged in the future. Kikiao said, That's not nonsense. I'm not worried that no one wants my daughter. Why don't you worry about me? No one wants her. I can even support her for the rest of her life. He really bound Chang'an's feet, which made Chang'an cry out in pain. At this time, even conservative people like the Zhang family, who had had their feet bound, had already given up their feet, let alone those who had not. So they all made fun of Chang on S feet after being wrapped for more than a year. Kikiao's temporary interest passed, and after being persuaded by her relatives, she gradually relaxed. However, Chang on S feet could not completely return to their original shape. The children in the third and third bedrooms of the Zhang family all went to foreign schools to study. Kikiao was always trying to compete with them, so he also sent Chang Bai to take the exam. In addition to playing small cards, Chang Bai only likes to go to the box office, where he works hard to raise his voice day and night. He is afraid that going to school will delay his homework, so he refuses to go. Kikiao had no choice but to send Chang on to Hafun Girls Middle School and asked someone to intercede and join the class. Chang An changed into a school uniform of blue patriotic cloth. Within half a year, his face became rosy, and his arms, legs and wrists became thicker. When students who live in the dormitories wash and change their clothes, they usually send them to the laundry bag provided by the school. Chang An couldn't remember his own number and often lost pillowcases, handkerchiefs and other parts. So Kikiao made a fuss about going to talk to the principal. I went home for the day off and checked, and found that a mattress sheet was missing. Kikiao was furious and prepared to go to school in person tomorrow to bring justice to the perpetrators. Chang An was worried and stopped him, and Kikiao scolded. You are a born prodigal? I will use your money as money. Is your mother's money easy to get? In the future, when you get married, what do you think I will do to accompany you? Give it to you. I give it to you for free. Chang An did not dare to say anything, but cried all night. She couldn't lose face like this in front of her classmates. To a 14-year-old, that seemed hugely important if her mother goes to make a scene. How will she face others in the future? She would rather die than go to school. Her friends and her favorite music teacher would soon forget that there was such a girl who came for half a year and then left quietly for no reason walk clean. She felt that her sacrifice was a beautiful, desolate gesture. In the middle of the night, she climbed out of bed and reached out the window to try. It was pitch dark. Was it raining? No raindrops. She took out a harmonica from the pillow, half squatted and half sat on the ground, and secretly played it. Hesitantly, the tiny tune of long, long ago rippled through the vast night, making it impossible for anyone to hear it. In order to suppress it with all his strength, the whining harmonica was intermittent and continuous, like a baby's cry. 
she couldn't catch her breath and rested for a long time. In the window pane, the moon came out of the clouds. The sky is gray, with a few stars and a vague moon, like a stone-printed picture. The white clouds are steaming below, and the faint round light of the street lamp shines from the top of the tree. Chang'an played the harmonica again. Tell me that story, my most beloved story from the past. Long ago, long ago, Golden Lock ate the next day she boldly told her mother, Mom, I don't want to miss it anymore. Kikiao opened her eyes and said, Why? Chang'an said, I can't keep up with my homework, and the food is too hard. I can't get used to it. Kikiao took off one of her shoes, slapped her with the sole of the shoe, and said angrily, your father is not as good as a human being. And you are not as good as a human being, either? It's not like I raised you to be a perfect person. So why don't you want to stand up for me? Chang and clasped his hands behind his back, lowered his eyes, and said nothing. The old ladies nearby advised, Sister, I'm older now, and the school is crowded with people. So it's really inconvenient, in fact. It's okay if you don't go. Kikiya muttered, you have to find a way to get the tuition fees back. Isn't it a waste of money for them? So she took Chang on with her to ask for money. But Chang on refused to go. Kiki Yao took two old ladies there and came back. According to her own narration, although the money was not returned, she really humiliated the principal. Later, Chang on met his classmates on the street. His face turned red and white, and he felt ashamed. He had to pretend not to see him and hurriedly walked over. A friend sent a letter, but she didn't dare to open it, so she returned it intact, and her school life came to an end. Sometimes she felt that the sacrifice was not worth it, and she secretly regretted it, but it was too late to redeem herself. She gradually gave up all progressive thoughts and settled down. She learned to pick right from wrong, make mischief, and interfere in the family's administration. She was angry with her mother from time to time, but her speech and behavior became more and more like her mother. Whenever she sat with her legs crossed, her hands on the exposed legs between her crotches, her head tilted, her chin resting on her heart. She looked at the person opposite miserably and said, there is a family in the family. A family's troubles, cousin. Every family has its own troubles. Everyone said that she was a perfect Kigong. She had her hair braided, and her eyebrows were as tight as those of Kikiao. Back then, but her small mouth was too narrow, making her look older, no matter how young she is. She is nothing more than a young snow red tree, pickled with salt. Someone also came to act as a matchmaker for her. If the family is a bit poor, Kikiao always suspects that they are greedy for their money. If the person is rich and powerful, but the other person is not very enthusiastic. Chang On is only of average appearance, and her mother is of low origin and has a reputation of being unwise, so she must not have much tutoring. Therefore, if you can't achieve high things and can't do low things, you can put it aside year after year. The Chang Bai marriage cannot be put aside. Chang Bai was out gambling and praising female actors. Kikiao didn't have much to say. Later, he gradually started to go shopping with his third uncle Zhang Jai's. Only then did Kikiao panic and hurriedly arranged an engagement for him and married a girl from the Yuan family, whose nickname was Si Life. It was a semi modern wedding. With a red hijab, the bride wore blue glasses, a pink wedding veil, and a pink skirt and coat. She entered the bridal chamber, took off her glasses, and sat under the lake colored curtain with her head lowered. People who were planning to get married were joking round, but Kikiao only took a look and came out. Chang On caught up with her at the door and whispered with a smile, the skin is quite fair, but the lips are too thick. Kikiao held the door with his hand, pulled out a golden ear pick and scratched his head, and sneered, what are you talking about? Your new sister-in-law's lips are quite big. A lady next to her said, people with thick lips are thick by nature. Kikiao snorted and pointed at the golden ear. Madam, she raised an eyebrow, tilted her mouth, and smiled slightly. Having a thick nature is not a good thing to say. In front of the girls, I can't say more I hope our brother Bai will not lose his life to her. In your hand, Kikiao was born with a sharp throat. Now because he is older, it is not so sharp, but it is still so sharp that it hurts from all sides, like a razor blade. 
These two senses are neither loud nor gentle. The flat face and chest of the bride in the crowd trembled probably due to the beating of the flames of the dragon and phoenix candles. After three dynasties, Kikiel felt that her bride was stupid and everything was not going as she wished, so she often complained to her relatives. Then someone advised, my young lady is young, my second sister-in-law must spend a lot of time teaching her, who can tell this child is heartless. Kikiao spat, look at how honest our new young lady is, when I met brother by son, she has to go to the toilet. Really? Do you believe it or not? This word reached Zishu's ears, and Zishu was so anxious that he just wanted to die. However, it was still not a full moon, Kikiao still had some dignity and later started to say similar things in front of Zishu. Zishu didn't cry or laugh, if he pretended not to hear with a straight face, Kikiao slapped the table. And sighed, it's not easy to eat in the hands of your son and wife, you're always looking for someone else's face, that night. Kikiao was lying down smoking, and Changbai was squatting on a sofa chair in front of the shop, eating melon seeds, a cold play was being sung on a radio. Jin, swinging one leg to right on the back of the chair, rocking back and forth to beat the time. Kikiao stretched out her foot and kicked him and said, Brother Bai, come and fill two tubes for me. Chang Bai said, Now that they are burning, you want to order me, what's wrong with the honey in my hand? Stretched out, slowly moved too. Sit on the small stool in front of the lamp, and rolled up his sleeves. Kikiao smiled and said, You are an unfilial slave. I am giving you orders to promote you. She narrowed her eyes and looked at him. This is the only man in her life these years. It was only him, and she wasn't afraid that he would miss her money. It was all his money anyway. However, because he is her son, he alone is not worth half of it. Now, she can't keep even this half of him. He is married. He is a thin, fair-skinned young man with a slightly hunched back. He wears gold-rimmed glasses and has fine facial features. He often smiles blankly, with his mouth open, and his mouth is shining with something. I don't know whether it's too much saliva, or him. Gold teeth, he opened his collar, revealing the beaded lining and white coat underneath. Kikiao put a foot on his shoulder, kept kicking his neck lightly, and whispered, I treat you, an unfilial slave. When did you become so unfilial? Chang An answered from the side, Kikiao said. Have you forgotten your mother after you married a daughter-in-law? Kikiao said. Don't talk nonsense. Our brother Bai is not that kind of person. I can't raise a son like that. Chang Bai just laughed. Kikiao looked at him sideways and said with a smile, If you were still my old brother Bai, you would burn the whole night for me today. Chang Bai smiled and said, That won't be a problem for me. Kikiao said. You're asleep. Watch me pound you. The curtains in the sitting room were removed and sent for cleaning. Looking out through the glass window, there is a moon in the dark clouds, one part black, one part white, like a dramatic and ferocious facial makeup. One o'clock. One o'clock. The moon slowly emerged from the clouds, and a bright light showed under the black clouds, which was the eyes under the mask. The sky is the deep blue color of a bottomless pit. It's long past midnight, Chang An went to bed early, while Chang Bai soaked in water and leaned forward and backward. Kikiao poured him a cup of strong tea, and the two of them ate candied candies and discussed the privacy of their neighbors. Kikiao suddenly asked with a smile, Brother Bai, tell me, is your wife good? Chang Bai said, what's there to say? Kikiao said, there's nothing to criticize, so she must be good. Chang Bai smiled and remained silent. Kikiao said, Okay, there is one who is good. Chang Bai said, Who said she is good? Kikiao said, She is not good. What is bad about her? Tell your mother. Chang Bai was just he gave vague answers and couldn't bear Kikiao's repeated questioning. So he had to reveal a few things. The old ladies who were handing tea and water turned away and giggled, and the girls covered their mouths and avoided laughing. Kikiao gritted his teeth, laughed, and murmured curses. He took off the bucket and knocked the ashes inside hard, making a loud bang. Chang Bai slipped his tongue and couldn't stop talking. He said enough, one night. Early the next morning, Kikiao asked her mother to get to blankets and send her brother to sleep on the couch, 
At this time, Zishu had also gotten up and came to say hello. Kikiao didn't sleep a wink all night, but she was full of energy. She invited several female relatives to play cards, including her mother-in-law. On the mahjong table, she announced the secret of her daughter-in-law that her son had confessed in person, slightly exaggerating it and making it more vivid and dramatic. Everyone tried their best to interrupt, but they couldn't say a word. Kikiao turned around with a smile and returned to her wife. Sishu's mother was so embarrassed that she couldn't see her daughter again, so she put down her cards and took a chartered car back. Golden Lock 9 Kikiao asked Changbai to burn it for her for two nights. Zishu lay upright on the bed, his two hands resting on his ribs curled up like the paws of a dead chicken. She knew that her mother-in-law was questioning her husband again, and she knew that her husband was recounting something, but God knew what else he had to say. Tomorrow he should come to her again with a face full of saliva, maybe he had expected that she would turn all her hatred on him. Even if she didn't have the ability to fight him, at the very least she would have to question him and cause a scene. Most likely, he was going to steal the show, cover his face with wine, find some trouble, and throw to things. She knew his temper. Finally, he would sit on the edge of the bed, hunch his shoulders, reach into his white silk coat to scratch an edge, and smile unexpectedly. A little light flickered on his gold-rimmed glasses, and a little light flickered in his mouth. I don't know if it was spit or gold teeth. He took off his glasses. Sishu suddenly sat up and opened the curtain with a loud bang. It's a crazy world. The husband doesn't act like a husband, and the mother-in-law doesn't act like a mother-in-law. Either they are crazy, or she is crazy. The moon tonight is better than any other day. It is a full moon high and cloudless, like a white sun in the dark sky. There were blue shadows everywhere. And there were also blue shadows on the top of the tent. And her feet were also in the dead shadow. When Zishu was about to hang up the tent, he reached out to touch the tent, one arm hung on the copper, his face rested on his shoulder, and he couldn't help sobbing. The tent was lowered automatically, there was no one else in the dim tent except her, but she was still surprised and hung up the tent again in a hurry. Outside the window, there was still the abnormally bright moon that made people's hair tremble, a small, blazing white sun in the dark sky. In the room, you can clearly see the rose purple embroidered chairs covered with tablecloths, the bright red and flat gold screen with five flying phoenixes, the crimson soft satin couplets, and the embroidered Chinese seal characters. On the dressing table, there are silver powder jars, silver basins, and silver vases networked with red and green silk. They are filled with happiness. From the eaves of the tent hang down colorful gold-wrapped bouquets, flower pots, wishful thinking and rice dumplings, with finger-sized drops hanging from the bottom, glass beads and pink tassels that are as long as a foot. The large room was filled with boxes, quilts, and furnishings. It was hard for her to find a sweat towel to hang herself, so she fell back on the bed. In the moonlight, her feet had no color at all. Green, green, purple, the color of a cold corpse. She wanted to die, she wanted to die. She was afraid of the moonlight, and didn't dare to turn on the light. Tomorrow her mother-in-law will say, brother by burn me to more bites, which kept our young lady awake all night. She lit the lamp in the middle of the night and waited for him to come back. We can't do without him. Zishu's tears kept flowing down the pillow. A flow, she didn't wipe her eyes with a handkerchief and it became swollen. It was time for her mother-in-law to say, brother by didn't go back to his room to sleep all night. And the young lady cried until her eyes turned into peaches. Although Kikiao described his son and daughter-in-law as such a passionate couple, Changbai was not very fond of Jishu. And Jishu hated Changbai with a passion. The husband and wife were at odds, and Changbai gradually wandered back to Huaji and Liu Xiang. Kikiao gave him a little girl, Huanar, to keep him young, but she still couldn't hold him captive. Kikiao tried another trick to coax him to eat. Chang Bai has always liked to smoke, but he is not addicted. Now that he has smoked a lot, he has given up and ran away. He only stays at home to watch over his mother and new concubine. His sister Chang An suffered from dysentery when she was 24 years old. Kikiao did not help her get medical treatment, but only advised her to smoke to tubes of opium, which indeed alleviated a lot of pain. 
after recovering from the illness. He became addicted. Chang An is even more different from Chang Bai. The young lady who has not left the palace has no other pastimes and focuses on smoking. And she smokes even more than Chang Bai. Some people try to dissuade her, but Kikiao said, What are you afraid of? Not to mention that our Zhang family can still afford it. Even if I sold a hectares of land to the two of them today, who dares to fart? I'll hire you tomorrow. If you marry someone else, you must have her share of the dowry. She eats her own food and drinks her own food, but my uncle is reluctant to part with it, so he can only look at her. Having said that, Chang on us marriage was somewhat affected after all. Those who were matchmakers were not very enthusiastic in the first place, but now they have disappeared. When Chang on was nearly 30, Kikiao saw that her daughter was destined to be an old girl. So she changed her tone and said, I am not good looking and can't get married. Why do you blame me for being a mother? She, she keeps her face all day long. As if I should pay her back the $200, I left her at home to have a bowl of leisurely tea and rice. But I had no intention of leaving her at home to make me angry. Zhang Jizi's daughter Changshan celebrated her 20th birthday and Chang'an went to pay her birthday to her cousin. Although Zhang Jiz is poor, fortunately he has a wide circle of friends and is still able to make a living. Changshan secretly said to her mother, Mom, try to introduce a friend to Sister Anne. She looks so pitiful. Her eyes are red before she even mentions the situation at home. Lan Xian hurriedly waved her hand and said, Come on, come on, I don't dare to be a matchmaker. Is your second mother's temper easy to offend? Chang Shen is young and does good things. How can you care about it? After resting for a while, I accidentally mentioned this matter to my classmates. It happened that the classmate had a cousin who had just returned from studying in Germany. He was also from the north after getting to know him carefully. He was still related to the Zhang family. The man's name was Tang Shi Feng, and he was a few years older than Chang An. Changshan actually took it upon herself to arrange everything, and the classmate's mother came to treat the guests. Chang'an kept it secret that the iron barrels at home were similar. Kikiao's body has always been strong, but because her daughter-in-law Sishu has tuberculosis, Kikiao thinks she is too pretentious. She eats this and eats that, and is exhausted. She seems to enjoy more blessings than usual, and she gets sick when she is angry. At first, it was just a lack of chi and blood, but the whole family was thrown into chaos. How could Zishu be taken care of at the same time? Later, Kikiao became seriously ill and became bedridden and became increasingly restless. Chang'an took advantage of the chaos and walked away. She called the tailor to her third uncle's house, and Changshin came up with the idea to make her new clothes. On the night of the banquet, Changshin accompanied her to the barber shop to perm her hair with pliers. Tiny hairbands were tightly attached from the temple to the temples, and a two-inch long glass emerald pagoda pendant was worn on her ear. She changed into an apple green georgette changsam, with a high collar, ruffled sleeves, and a semi-western pleated skirt below the waist. A young lady squatted on the ground and buttoned her buttons. Changan looked at himself in the dressing mirror. He couldn't help but stretched out his arms, kicked up his skirt, and assumed the posture of a great fairy. He turned around and laughed and said, Dress me up like a goddess with flowers. Changshan made a look at the young lady in the mirror, and both of them laughed in unison. After Chang'an put on her makeup, she sat upright on the high chair. Changshan said, I'm going to call for a taxi. Chang'an said, It's still early. Changshan looked at his watch and said, The appointment is for 8 o'clock, and it's already 5 minutes past 8 o'clock. Chang'an said, being half an hour late shouldn't be a problem. Chang Shen guessed that she was deliberately trying to put on some airs, and she felt angry and amused. She opened her silver hand back to check it, and then walked away on the pretext that she forgot to bring her powder mirror. He came to her mother's room and told her this again, and then said, Today is not a treat for anyone named Tong. Who is she doing this for? I am too lazy to persuade her, so she will wait until tomorrow. Go in the morning and don't do anything about me. Lan Xian Dao, look at how stupid you are. You made the appointment. You were the matchmaker. How can you get rid of this relationship? How many times have I complained to you? You should have done it long ago, I understand. 
sister and is just as petty as her mother, Anne doesn't want to be on the stage, the one who behaves badly later, speaking of it, is your sister, and you deserve to be embarrassed. Who told you to take all these rights and wrongs into your hands? Are you crazy? Changshan pouted and sat in her mother's room for a long time. Lan Xian said with a smile, Look at this situation. Your sister is waiting for someone to urge her. Changshan said, I won't urge her. Lan Xian said, Silly girl, what's the use of urging you to do it? She's waiting for a call from over there. Changshan laughed out loud and said, You're not a bride so you have to be invited and urged to get on the sedan chair. Lan Shianda said, Anyway, you can call the hotel and call me. Wouldn't it be settled if they called me? It's almost 9 o'clock, and things are really going to fall apart if we go on any longer. Chang Shin had no choice but to do as he was told, and he just started to move. Golden Lock Ten Chang An was still in high spirits in the car, chatting and laughing. When he arrived at the restaurant, he suddenly became reserved. He followed Chang Shin and quietly entered the room. He timidly took off his apple green ostrich feather cloak, lowered his head and sat upright, holding up a hand. A tenth of an almond was gently nibbled every two minutes, chewing slowly. She came here to be seen. She felt that her whole body was impeccably dressed and it wouldn't matter if people took a second look at her. However, her body was completely redundant and there was no place to shrink it. She remained silent and finished the whole meal. While waiting for the beets to be served, Chang Shen pulled her to the window to watch the street scene, then excused herself and walked away. Then Tong Shifeng walked to the window and asked, Has Miss Zhang been here before? Chang In whispered, No. Tong Shifeng said, This is my first time too. The food is not bad, but I'm still not used to it. Chang An said, Not used to it. Shi Feng said, No. Foreign food is relatively bland. Chinese food is much grazier. When I first came back, I spent several days catching up with relatives and friends, and it was easy to get hungry. Chang'an looked at her fingers repeatedly, as if she was intent on counting how many fingerprints there were. They're spiral-shaped, and some are dustpans. Above the glass window, a small neon flower bloomed for no reason, reflected in a store opposite. The green heart and red petals are the lotus of the Nile River and the lily emblem of the French royal family. Shi Feng had not seen a girl from his homeland for many years and felt that Chang An had a delicate and pitiful charm, which made him a little happy. He had already engaged before studying abroad because he fell in love with a female classmate and opposed the marriage at home to the death. They traveled a long distance, bought countless lawsuits, and almost fell out. His parents once cut off his marriage, the help made him suffer a lot, and then he obeyed him and terminated the contract. Unfortunately, his female classmate fell in love with someone else and abandoned him, frustrated. He immersed himself in reading for seven or eight years. He firmly believes that his wife is still better in the old style, and it is also due to the reaction. After meeting Chang An, both of them understood, Chang Shen thought about sending the Buddha to the West. No matter how enthusiastic she was, she was not qualified to speak to Chang An's mother, so she had to talk to Lan Xian. Lan Xian insisted on refusing and said, It's not like you don't know that your father and your second mother are enemies and never meet each other. Although I have never blushed with her, no matter how good I am, it will only be limited. So why bother asking for trouble? When Chang An met Lan Xian, he just shed tears but Lan Xian was not affectionate and had to agree to go for a walk. The sisters-in-law met and greeted each other, and Lang Shen explained the purpose of his visit. When Kichichu heard this, she was happy because she said, Then please leave it to third sister, I can't take care of sick Hang Hang, so I'm overworking third sister. This girl is a pain in my heart, I'm a mother, I can't say I feel sorry for her. I followed the old school rules and I bound her feet. I followed the new style rules and sent her to school. What else could I do? For a person who has been trained like me by ripping out the heart and liver, as long as she has no scars, no numbness, and no blindness, how can anyone want her? But this girl was born to be a do who cannot be supported. She hated me so much that I just yelled. Maybe I just closed my eyes 
and let the man marry the woman and let nature take its course. It was agreed that Langshan would treat the guests and they would go on a blind date. Chang'an and Tong Shifeng only acted like they had never met before, and they only met once. Kikiao was ill in bed and did not show up, so Chang'an got engaged calmly. At the banquet, Langshan and Changshan took Chang'an's hand and handed it to Tong Shifeng, who put the ring on her in public. The bride's family also returned the gift. Although the four treasures of the study were dispensed with, they were replaced with a new velvet pencil case and a watch was added. After the engagement, Chang'an secretly went out with Shifeng alone several times. Basking in the autumn sun, the two of them walked side by side in the park, rarely speaking. And there was a bit of each other's clothes and moving feet in the corners of their eyes. The woman's pink fragrance and the man's tampa aura, this simple and lovely impression. It was the langan around them that separated them from everyone else on the open green grass. Many people were running, laughing, and talking. But they were walking along a beautiful and silent corridor in an as silent corridor. Without speaking, Chang'an didn't feel any shortcomings. She thought that this was the end of the new style of communication between men and women. As for Tong Shifang, because of his past painful experiences, he was completely skeptical about the exchange of ideas. He is satisfied with having someone by his side in the past. He hated the men in novels. When asking a woman to live together, he only said, please give me some comfort. Comfort is purely spiritual, but here it is synonymous with sensuality. But he now knows that the boundary between spirit and matter cannot be so clearly distinguished. Words are useless after all. A long handshake is the comfort of compromise, because there are very few people who can speak, and even fewer who really have something to say. Sometimes when it rained in the park, Chang'an held up an umbrella, and Shi Feng held it for her. Through the translucent blue silk umbrella, thousands of raindrops shine like stars in the sky. The stars of the day followed them everywhere, on the silvery car windows, the car passed red lights and green lights. A red star flew outside the window, and another green star, Chang'an came home with some random dreams, under the starlight, and became unusually silent. Smile all the time, seeing this, Kikiao couldn't help but feel angry, and said coldly, I have neglected the girl a lot over the years. It's no wonder that the girl rarely smiles. Now she jumped out of the Zhang family's door and got her wish. If she could be happier, it would be, don't show it on your face like that. It's so chilling. According to Chang'an's usual temperament, he would retort, but Chang'an seems to be a different person recently. He doesn't care after hearing this, and just works hard to quit. Kikiao couldn't do anything to her. On the day of the engagement in Chang'an, the eldest grandma Dazen didn't go and came to say goodbye a few days later. Kikiao quietly called her sister-in-law and said, I think we should go out and ask around. We can't do this rashly. The day before yesterday, I seem to have a scratch in my ear, saying that there is a wife in the country. And there is another one overseas, Dazen said. The one in the country broke off the engagement before they even got married. The same goes for the one overseas. They said they had been friends for several years, but somehow it didn't work out, Kikiao said. Then there is another reason? A man's heart says when his voice changes. He changes. He doesn't even acknowledge the three mediators and six hires, let alone that shady guy. Do you know if he has anyone else abroad? I only have this daughter, so I can't be confused. Ruining her life. I myself have suffered the pain of being a matchmaker. Chang'an sat aside and pinched the palm of his hand with his nails. The palms of his hands were red, but the nails were white as snow. As soon as Kikiya raised his eyes and saw her, he scolded. Shameless girl, keep your ears open. Can you hear this? When we were girls, it was too late to mention our mother-in-law's house. Get away. Your Zhang family has been a scholar for generations. I'm afraid you have to go to your grandma's house who runs a sesame oil shop to learn some rules. Chang'an cried and ran out. Kikiao patted the pillow and let out a cry. The girl is in a hurry to get married. And there's nothing I can do about it. She stinks and drags her home. She says she's looking for someone for her third aunt. But in fact, she's just looking for her third aunt. As a cover, it was probably because the raw rice had become cooked rice. So I got my third aunt to come out as a matchmaker. 
We all work together to fool me. It's okay to fool me. To put it bluntly, calling mother is the face of brother where to put it. Another day, Chang and made an excuse and slipped out. When he came back, Kikiao didn't wait for questioning. When he was about to report his whereabouts, Kikiao scolded, come on, come on. Just stop saying a few words. What are you doing in front of me? One day you let me hold on to the real evidence. Ha, huh, don't think that I can't beat you now that you're old and engaged. Chang An said anxiously. I gave Sister Shin some shoes. Did I break the law, mother? If you don't believe me, ask your third aunt, Kikiao said. Your third aunt has found a man for you, who will be your reborn parents. And then you will raise your parents. I have never seen such a light-hearted person like you. In the blink of an eye, he will be here. Your family has disappeared. Your family has supported you all these years. And all they have to do is buy a servant to serve you. How can you no longer live with you? You can't sit still at home for a moment. Chang'an blushed and burst into tears, dropped down. Kikiao took a breath and said again, I didn't want any good ones at the beginning, but now I'm going to marry a useless one. If someone chooses the leftovers, wouldn't he be slapping himself if he were a human being? How could he live to be 30? How come you have traveled across the ocean and traveled hundreds of thousands of miles, but you still haven't got a house and a wife? Golden Lock 11 however, Chang'an remained stubborn. Because both parties were very young and had been engaged for less than a few months, the husband asked Lan Xian to agree on a wedding date. Kikiao pointed at Chang'an and said, If you don't marry early, you won't marry later. It's just because you haven't made money in the past two years. If the harvest in the fields is better next year, the dowry will be neater. Lan Xian Dao, nowadays, the new style of marriage is not good. That's it. Just follow the new school method and save a little. Kikiao said. What new school and old school? The old school is just more grand. The new school is more affordable. But it is still the bad luck of my mother's family. Lan Xiandao, second sister-in-law looks at it, that's it. Is it possible that sister and will argue more and less? Everyone in the room laughed. And Chang and also smiled slightly. Kikiao cursed loudly. Don't be ashamed. What's wrong with you having something in your stomach that you can't hold back? You can't wait to get married. I don't want the dowry anymore. You are willing, but others are not. You are you sure that he is after you? You are so overconfident. What is it about you that makes people like you? Don't fool yourself as soon as possible. The person surnamed Tong has taken a fancy to the Zhang family's family background. Don't look at it your family is prosperous. And the princes, generals, and ministers are not like that at all. They have been strong from outside for a long time, but they can't even hold up their empty ears in the past two years. As for people, one generation is as bad as the next. How can there be a relative in the eyes of heaven and earth? Young master, we don't understand anything. Young ladies know that a man wants money, even worse than a pig or a dog. My mother-in-law should never have gotten married to the Zhang family and deceived me all my life. I will tell that boy surname Tong later. Don't be fooled like me before it's too late. Ever since the quarrel, Lan Xian stopped caring about the marriage. Kikiao's illness gradually recovered. And she got out of bed for a little while, then sat by the door every day. Shouting from a distance to Chang An's house, if you want a wild man, go ahead and find him. But don't bring him to the door to accept me as your mother-in-law. It pisses me off so much. I just want to be out of sight and out of mind. It's a girl's grace to allow me to live for two more years. He muttered a few words so loudly that he could be heard all over the street. Naturally, the matter spread among the relatives. Kikiao called Chang on to him again, and suddenly shed tears and said, My son, you know that people outside are ruining you no matter how long or short you are, and you are not worth a penny. Ever since your mother married into the Zhang family, no one from top to bottom has not they are snobbish and look down on others. I don't know how much I have been offended by them overtly or covertly. Even your father. What good has he done to me? And I have to be a widow for him. I have worked hard for these 20 years, nothing more. I hope that your two sisters will grow up and save some face for me. I don't expect that today we will end up like this. As he spoke, he began to sob. 
When Chang'an heard this, he felt like a thunderbolt struck his head. Even though her mother said she was not a human being, no matter how outsiders said she was not a human being, she couldn't control much of it. Only Tang Shifeng him what should he think? Does he still want her? Has his attitude changed a bit since the last time we met? It's hard to say. She is too happy, and she won't notice the small differences. The physical pain and various stimulations during the period of withdrawal were both attacking. Chang'an couldn't stand it for a long time, but he could hold on even though he held on. It was over, and now she suddenly felt that all the bones in her body were out of joint. Should she explain to him? He was no better than her brother. He was not her mother's child, and he could never fully understand her mother's personality. It's okay if he really can't see her mother in his life, but sooner or later he will get to know Kikiao. This is something that lasts forever. Only a person who has been a thief for a thousand years has never been able to guard against thieves for a thousand years. Does she know what methods her mother will use? Sooner or later there will be trouble. Sooner or later there will be a breakup. This was the most perfect period in her life. Instead of letting others add an unsavory tale to it, she would have ended it early herself, a beautiful and desolate gesture. She knew she would regret it. She knew she would regret it. But she raised her eyebrows and pretended not to mind. And said, since mother doesn't want to get married, I'll go back. Just get rid of them. Kikia was crying when she suddenly stopped, paused, and started crying again. Chang An calmed down and called Tang Shi Fang. Shi Fang was not free that day, so we made an appointment for tomorrow afternoon. What Chang An fears most is that this intervening night will bite into her heart minute by minute. The next day, at the usual place in the park, Chi Fang came up to her with a smile, but did not say hello to her. This was a sign of intimacy on his part. He seemed to pay special attention to her today looking at her face many times while walking side by side. The sun was shining brightly, and Chang'an felt more and more that his eyelids were so swollen that he couldn't lift them up. Just say it while he wasn't looking at her. She softly called Mr. Tong with a voice that was dumb from crying, but Chi Feng didn't hear her. Then, let's say it while he's looking at her. She was surprised that she still had a smile on her face, and whispered, Mr. Tong, I think, our matter may still be, let's talk about it later. I'm very sorry. She took off the ring and stuffed it into his hand. Cold rings, cold and wet hands. She walked faster, and he was stunned for a while, then caught up and asked, Why? Are you dissatisfied with me? Chang'an looked straight ahead and shook his head. Shi Feng said, Then, why? Chang'an said, My mother. Shi Feng said, Your mother has never seen me. Chang'an said, I told you, it's not because of you. With you it doesn't matter at all. My mother, Shi Feng stood firm. Is this a very good reason in China? He hesitated a little. And she was already gone. The garden has been basking in the late autumn sun all morning and afternoon, and is like overripe fruits, falling, falling, and emitting a fragrant fragrance. Chang'an Yuayu suddenly heard the sound of the harmonica, and slowly played long, long ago tell me that story, my most beloved story in the past. A long time ago, a long time ago. This is now, and it has changed in the blink of an eye. It was a long time ago, and everything was finished. As if possessed, Chang'an went looking for the harmonica player looking for herself. Walking in the sunshine, she reached the bottom of the tree. A boy in yellow shorts was riding on the branches of the tree, playing a harmonica. But he was playing a different tune that she had never heard before, a small tree with sparse and bright sycamore leaves shaking like golden bells in the sun. Chang'an looked up. His eyes darkened for a while, like a sudden rain, and tears covered his face in strings. Shi Feng found her, stood quietly beside her for a long time, and said, I respect your opinion. Chang'an picked up her purse to cover her face from the sun. They continued to communicate for some time. Shi Feng wanted to show that the purpose of having a girlfriend for a new character was not limited to choosing a mate. So even though he broke off the engagement with Chang'an, he still invited her out frequently. As for Chang'an, she didn't know what kind of contradictory hopes she had when following him out. Even if she knew, she wouldn't admit it. When we were engaged, we went out together openly, even if we had to hide it from the family. 
but now it has become a secret agreement. Shi Feng's attitude was always calm, of course, she slightly hurt his self-esteem. And he felt a little sorry for her, but why should a man worry about not having a wife? The most solemn compliment a man can give a woman is to propose marriage. He gave up his freedom and gave her this generous gift. Although she returned it with all her heart, he gave it to her with all his heart. This is a free thing. No matter how subtle and awkward the relationship between the two was, they became serious friends. They even talked. Chang Anes and familiar words often made Shi Feng laugh and say, You are such an interesting person. Chang An gradually discovered that she was a very interesting person. Even Shi Feng himself would be surprised at how far things will develop if this continues. However, the sound of wind reached Kikiao's ears. Kikiao went behind Chang Anes back and ordered Chang Bai to post a message asking Tang Shi Feng to have a casual meal. Shi Feng guessed that Zhang Jiaxu wanted to warn him not to break up with their lady. But he and Chang Bai had two cups of wine in the dark and spacious dining room and talked for a while about the weather. Current situation. Not a word of customs, or customs, is attached to Chang An. The cold dishes were removed, and Chang Bai suddenly stood up with his hands on the table. Shi Feng turned around and saw a small old lady standing at the door with her back to the light. Her face could not be seen clearly. She was wearing a green and gray Dragon Palace woven satin robe. She was holding a red-hot water bottle in both hands. She was flanked by the tall people. Maid, the sun is dim outside the door. And the stairs are covered with light green plaid linoleum lichen. As you go up one step at a time, you lead to a place where there is no light. Shi Feng intuitively felt that he was a madman for no reason. He was just terrified. Chang Bai introduced. This is my mother. Golden Lock 12 Shi Feng moved his chair, stood up, and bowed. Kikiao put her hand on the arm of a maid and walked in. After saying a few polite words, she sat down and offered a toast and food. Chang Bai said, Where is my sister? There are guests here, but she doesn't help with the preparations. Kikiao said, She smoked a more tubes and then came down. Shi Feng was startled and opened his eyes to look at her. Kikiao hurriedly explained, this child suffered from a congenital deficiency, and she had to be sprayed when she went to the ground. Later, she was also smoked because of illness. There are enough inconveniences in Mrs. House. It's not like she has never quit, and her body is delicate. And I'm used to it. So if I throw it away, how can I throw it away? It's been 10 years since I quit smoking. Shi Feng couldn't help but change his expression. Kikiao had the prudence, and would of a madman. She knew that if she wasn't careful, people would mock her smelling. Distrustful eyes cut off her words. She was used to that kind of pain. She was afraid that if she spoke too much, someone would see through her. So he stopped himself early and was busy adding wine and dishes. After some time, when she mentioned Chang on again, she repeated those words in an understatement. Her flat, sharp throat was cut with human razor blades on all sides, Chang'an quietly walked downstairs, his black flower embroidered shoes and white stockings staying on the dimly lit stairs. After stopping for a while, he went up again, step by step, and walked into the place where there was no light. Kikiao said, Chang Bai, please drink two more cups with Mr. Tong. I'll go up first. The servant brought a hot pot and replaced it with freshly blanched green bamboo leaves. A girl hurriedly stood at the door and called out the boy who was waiting at the table. After muttering for a while, the boy came in again and said a few words to Chang Bai Fuer. Chang Bai got up hastily, apologized to Shi Feng again and again, and said, Excuse me for now. I'll come as soon as I can. He also went upstairs with three feet and two steps, leaving only Shi Feng drinking alone. The boy also felt sorry and told him in a low voice, our girl Silk is about to give birth. Shi Feng asked, Who is Miss Silk? The boy said, She is the young master's aunt. Shi Feng took the rice and took a few random bites. He couldn't put down the bowl and leave, so he had to sit on the rosewood bed and wait. His ears were warm from the wine, and he suddenly felt unusually tired, so he lay down. The rosewood bed with curling clouds, the cold yellow vine seeds, the cold fragrance of grapefruit. My aunt has given birth to a baby. This is the ancient China that he misses. 
His demure and quiet Chinese lady is an opium smoker. He sat up, holding his head in his hands, feeling embarrassed and lonely. He took off his hat and went out, and said to the boy, Please tell your superiors later and I will meet you another day to thank you. He passed through the brick courtyard. There was a tree in the middle of the courtyard, and a dead branch of the tree. High in the light blue sky, like ice patterns on magnets. Chang Jing followed him out quietly. Her navy blue long sleeve Chang Sam with light yellow daisies on it. She clasped her hands together, her face showing a rare tenderness. Shi Feng turned around and said, Miss Zhang. She stood far away, just hanging her head. Shi Feng bowed slightly, turned around and laughed. Chang An felt that she was looking at the courtyard in the sun from a considerable distance. Looking down from a tall building, it was clear and friendly, but she had no ability to interfere. The courtyard, the trees, and the two people with their dull shadows had nothing to say, not much. A few memories that will be held in a crystal bottle and held in both hands in the future, her first and last love. Zishu lay upright on the bed, his two hands resting on his ribs curled up like the paws of a slaughtered chicken. The tent was half raised. She wouldn't let them put down the tent for her day or night. She was afraid. Word came in from outside that Miss Silk had given birth to a young master. The girl dropped the steaming pot of medicine and ran out to have fun. With the door open, a gust of wind blew in, causing the curtain to sway wildly. The curtain was lowered automatically, but Zishu no longer protested. Her head tilted to the right and rolled off the pillow. She didn't die. It took another half a month to die. The silk girl straightened herself up and became Zishu's substitute. After being nursed back to health for less than a year, he committed suicide by swallowing raw opium. Chang Bai did not dare to marry again and only walked around in the brothel. Chang An has long given up the idea of getting married. Kikiao seems to be sleeping but not sleeping, lying on the cigarette shop. For 30 years she wore a golden yoke. She used the heavy shackle horn to kill several people. And those who survived lost half their lives. She knew that her son and daughter hated her, her husband's family hated her, and her mother's family hated her. She fumbled with the jade bracelet on her wrist, and slowly pushed the bracelet up her bony arm until it reached her armpit. She herself couldn't believe that she had had round arms when she was young. Even after a few years of marriage, there was only enough room for a crepe handkerchief in the bracelet. When I was a girl of 18 or 19, I rolled up the sleeves of my blue linen shirt with big embroidery and large rolls, revealing a pair of snow-white wrists, and went out to buy groceries. Those who like her include Chao Lu from the butcher shop, her brother's sworn brothers Ding Yukin and Zhang Xiaoquan, and Taylor Shan's son. Like her, maybe just like to joke with her. However, if she chooses one of them, as time goes by and she gives birth to a child, the man will be more or less sincere to her. Kikiao moved the small ruffled pillow under her head and rubbed it on her face. She lazily wiped away a tear on that side and let it hang on her cheeks, gradually drying up on her own. After Kikiao passed away, Chang An and Chang Bai separated and moved out. It was not difficult for Kikiao's daughter to solve her own problems. Rumor had it that she was walking down the street with a man, stopped at a stall, and he bought her a pair of garters. Maybe she used her own money, but in any case, it was taken out of the man's bag. Of course, this is just a rumor. The moon of 30 years ago has long since set, and the people of 30 years ago have died. However, the story of 30 years ago is not over yet. It cannot be over. All right, this story has come to an end. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you.